and five foolish. But it's the same parable. It's just written a different way. When he talks about being wise and being foolish, we need to take a hold of that. We can say amen when the, when the preacher is preaching and it's so good to us. And we can always see somebody else's fault. All right now. But we don't want to be, we need a Naaman in our life to come and do us like he did David. You're the man. Right. You're the yeah. woman. Yeah. You know, it's, it's easy for me to look in the window and see her leaves faults and tell, I want to tell her, I'm broadcasting. Mm -hmm. But is it so easy to look in the mirror mm -hmm. and behold yes. my I own faults? Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. So don't be so quick to be so judgmental with these five wise and five foolish because we've all been in their shoes. Mm -hmm. We've all not prepared sometimes and missed out on what we needed, but we don't want to miss God. This is a day and time where we don't want to miss God. Amen. 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 So 25 and 14, we'll start reading there. And it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that hath received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter, thee, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse 22, He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where you have a sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, that there thou hast that is thine. His Lord said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, mm. thou knewest that I reap where I sowed mm -hmm. not, and gathered where I not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Mm. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that have abundance, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Amen. 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 When I read this, Jesus. I'm like, Lord, this is a this is an indictment. Mm. This is an indictment okay. against the church. Jesus. We are playing church. Well. We are playing with God. We are not serious about the things of God. When I looked at it, he said there was as a man that was going on a long journey. And he called his servants and gave them his money, basically. He gave them his talents. He gave them, he said he gave them money according to their ability. Right. So don't get so bent out of shape because you're doing five jobs in the church and you're doing two jobs in the church and you're only doing one. Your ability allows you to do five. Okay. Your ability allows you to do two and your ability allows you to do one but you got to take care of that one all right see god has given us responsibility with the talents and you so we so focused on oh well it looks like she's shining so great uh, no god she god knows that she can multitask she like the octopus she can handle these five things and i know that when i call her on the carpet about them she's gonna give me a count lord i did this 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 and this now i can't help if they didn't do what they were supposed to do and when he calls you on the carpet about the two but now we act like the man with the one 
God has given some of us the ability to sing, some the ability to work Facebook and all the computers. He's given us the ability to bookkeep. He's given you the ability to clean up like nobody's business. He's given you the ability to uh, talk to these little children and make them know that, okay, this is not right. No, we're going to do this. Speak, Lord. God has given us abilities, responsibility that we have shown. Jesus. So acting like the five you foolish. Do well, I don't want to get no oil because I can borrow some from Sally. Ah. Sally trying to keep her own oil. oil. She's trying to stay in the word. She's trying to fast and pray. She's trying to do what's right even when it, when it don't feel good. Because, see, you can do what's right outside of your feelings. You do what's right because it's right. Because of what God said is right. The man with the five talents, he said... You know, have you noticed how your children, when they do something well, and they come to tell mom and dad, they're skipping it out. Yeah. But the other one that didn't do what they said, they avoid you like to play. Yes. Same way we do God. Exactly. We are doing God the same, the same way. way. Mm -hmm. He says, well, what are you doing with your talent? Mm -hmm. If you just need a title, what are you doing with your talent? Mm. Are you talking to anybody about Christ? Because, see, that's a oh, gift that you got for free when you confessed him and all of your mess room. saved you, picked you up out of your mess, out of the miry clay. But what are you doing with that gift? That's a gift you got responsibility over, and we're not tending to it. Proverbs say you got to tend to your garden. One of the people in Proverbs said, in, I think it was Song of Solomon, he said, my skin is dark because I've been tending to everybody else's garden and mine looking at shabby. Walls all broke down. We have no business in the body of Christ looking thrown away and acting any kind of way. Jesus. We have to be accountable for he's that's why you got two ears. We swift to hear and slow to speak. So that you can what you say, it can be seasoned with salt. And it still can get the job done without you clowning and cutting the buck and cussing them out. You have to learn how to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Because sometimes it's not the appropriate time for you to open your mouth. Learn the gift of shut up. Oh, God. Jesus. Bite your tongue. You be like, Oh, I want to tell them this. God said, don't give them a piece of your mind. You need your mind. You need the mind of Christ. Don't give them a piece of your mind. Keep your mind. And if you keep it staying on Jesus, he'll keep you in perfect peace. You got to know how to put the scripture where it applies. Get in where you fit in. That's the word right there. Because you, we are so busy trying to impress people that don't even matter. Don't even matter. Oh. What you say? They don't matter. You can have on the best outfit, and when you walk in and they see it and you sit down, it's over. You spent all that money, robbed God, because you didn't pay no time. You come and put an envelope up here with a dollar in it. Just twist it. High heels, just click it. But you don't rob God, but you show up as a tag. Dress to the nine, and God can't get nine from you. You actually owe him ten. Jesus. Ties. We don't do the principles. See, some people get the principles and they don't come to church at all. They do right. the principles. They, sure do. they, they will they, send they, their ties to church they and they're not coming. Uh -huh. they, sure they will do what's right because they've been taught that it is right to bless God. It's right to treat people right. It's right. It's good to say good morning. I was in a facility the other day and got on the elevator with good morning. About four or five people. One lady was acting like she was so busy looking at her phone. And the lady said, well, my, I guess the cat got her tongue. I say, oh, the bunny one. Somebody, something Never good. open her mouth. Just rude. That's rude. No, there is a such thing as home training. And we have to learn the home training of the church. Be at church on time. Because when you go to the job, cha-ching, you hitting that oh, time you clock. You time. swiping that badge. Because you know if you're late too many times, you won't be there. Won't be. You'll have fine happiness elsewhere. <laughs> but we treat God like a casual companion. Jesus. We just lay down on God. It's Sunday. Ooh, I need to wash the car. Well, you needed to wash it on Saturday. What happened to Saturday? Mm. If you was going to Shindig, I bet it would be clean. Because when you roll up, they got to see the rims. They got to see how good it looked. They got to see that you sharp and smelling good. But when you come to the house of God, you come late. If you come at all. Mm. 
Jesus. Your tithes don't come when you don't come. Ooh. Jesus. Sometimes when we come, our tithes still don't come. Jesus. Help us, Lord. God's house is it has to be taken care of too. When Matt, when Malachi said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. <clears throat> that there may be meat in my house. I can't meet a bill you got, baby, if we don't have any money at the church. You know you preach. I can't go Jesus. and buy nobody any groceries if we don't have money at the church. If I don't have it in my account, I can't help you. If God has blessed us to be a blessing, let's just be a blessing. Amen. See, we think we're missing something. If we give God his first, and then, I, oh, Lord, I, this is all I got left. I, I've been there, done that. Amen. Amen. When I first learned how to tithe, I was in the Methodist church, and we paid dues. Am I right about it, Pastor Porter? You're right. Mm -hmm. I know about that. Hold on. God taught me about paying tithe in the Methodist church. Children pay dues. And I wrote the check. It was like breaking the sound barrier. I could hardly tell it. I said, well, God, what they going to do with it? It's not your responsibility. Your job is to honor me. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there's meat in my house. Because see, what your church does is your church blesses people. Your church has things for young people. Your church has different programs. They feed all of y'all when you come. You know, and folks want to take four or five plates home. So it takes money to do all of that. Amen. Lord help. Amen. It takes people that are willing to stay and serve the food. People that are willing to clean up afterwards. Child, I'm, I got to go. No, if your husband don't say you have to go, then you need to at least assist sometime. Get a bag and pick up the trash. You know, we don't want to do anything in the church anymore that's viable. We know children's church go on every Sunday. How about bring a snack sometime for them? All right. All right. How about volunteer? I want to be the teacher. Because you have a talent, something God has blessed you with that you can you know, impart to somebody else. You don't have to be the one on the pulpit to have a talent. Amen. Say that again. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 that he has given gifts. He has put some in the church. He's given those pastors and teachers, evangelists, for the work, for the building up of the church, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But you know how we do? We build you up so that you can go and build somebody else up. But if you just want to sit on the pew and be a little fat ranch, that's all you're going to be. When the devil come, you we don't hardly know how to fight because we so big, we can't get up. We acting like a super wrestler. We can't get out of this chair. You full of the word. Get out and do something with it. All right, all right. Tell somebody about the goodness of your God. Because they don't want to hear it, but there are some that need to hear it. We're in a day and time where people are, have become lovers of, them, of their own selves. And I hate to say it, but Facebook is one of the things that we do. You know, we take a million selfies. All right. I'm at the pizza place. Oh, I, it's nothing wrong yeah, with taking a picture and enjoying life. Because God says, yeah, I've given you all things oh, richly to enjoy. Amen, amen. But don't be so selfish with it. Jesus. We have to learn how to do all things decently and in order. Amen. Sometimes you don't need to put a picture out there. Sometimes the burglar waiting on you to tell them where you at so they can go to your house. You right. And I know some people that has happened to them. Yeah. You know, we going to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Well, the day when they <laughs> left, the burglar came right on in and took everything. Oh then when they got home, posted another, you know, we've been robbed. <laughs> yeah. Because the burglar was on Facebook too. Thank you. I post all the same out at home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had made a bet. <laughs> Thank you. God wants us to, the, five, the one that had the five talents. Amen. We are so quick to judge them, but Luke 12 and 36 says, to whom much is given, yes. much is required. Amen. Responsibility comes with every job. That's right. We, always, we say this, oh, I want a better job, God. I want oh. this. But let me just tell you, when you go to the next level, you got a next level responsibility to go oh. with it. You better know that. You have the ability to do it. When God blesses you with the next level job, just know it's some next level devils that's coming Whoa. to push you in that position. They're going to test you because they're going to see what you're made of. Are you who, really who you say you are? Are you really a Christian? Doesn't mean we won't falter or fall. Don't mean we won't act up sometime. But know this, quickly repent. 
Because the master's gone away for a long time. And people keep saying, oh, Jesus is coming back. Oh, yeah, they've been saying that. <laughs> yes, but it's, the day is closer now than it was then. So the logic behind this whole parable, he gave the one five, gave the one two, he gave the one one. In Luke 19, he told them, occupy till I come. He's telling the church that occupy till I come. It's a soul that needs to be saved out there. It's a mother out there with four or five children who ain't shucking and jiving with welfare and don't know how she's going to make ends meet. But you can't be a blessing to her if you don't have anything to bless her with. Sometimes you need to be the one that God put it on your heart to go to the grocery store and just take a bag. Amen. Don't go to the grocery store and skimp and pick little nitpick of stuff that you wouldn't want. Pick the stuff you would want and take it to somebody else. Sow some seeds. Amen. Sow some good seeds. When you plant a seed, you reap a harvest. Because Genesis said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. What you sow, you reap. If you sow some things in your children, you reap some things out of your children. That's why you need to watch what you say. My grandmother always said, little pictures have big ears. And I used to be looking at the picture trying to figure out where the ears were. She was talking about us. She was talking about little bit of people. You little people listening to everything the grown people say. That's why some of the children go to school and they're cussing and clowning like they're grown. Because they're hearing what you say and how you treat them. And people trying to discipline them and help them to get better and not to be a statistic. And you come to the school clowning. Uh, yeah. Come on now, we got to do better. Amen. The one that had the one talent, he suffered from doubt and unbelief and selfishness. He was selfish. He was like, I'm scared. Mm. The Bible says there is no fear in love. God is love. Perfect love. Mature love. Cast out fear. Because fear have torment. Have you ever been afraid of something and it wasn't that, it's just a thought of. Mm -hmm. And you know you just about to shake your, out your boots. Mm -hmm. But when you face your fears, oh, sometimes you will never conquer what you're not willing to face. Mm -hmm. You just kind of brush off stuff you don't want to deal with, talk to the hand. No, sometimes you got to say, let me talk to the face. All right, all right. <clears throat> I'm the monster now. Mm -hmm. You got to let your fear know I'm the monster. I got the word of God that's going to back me up. Lord, amen. I got the word of God that says I can do all things. He says even though I go through the fire, I won't be burned up because his right hand upholds me. So I got to know that when I'm going through, God is going to uphold me. You are God's precious gift. Thank you, Lord. He has invested something in you. He has invested a talent in you. And God wants to return on his gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wants to return on his gift, Miss Levita, Miss Carol, Brother Mike. He wants to return on his gift. He wants you to occupy until he comes. He wants you to be doing something to further and advance the kingdom. Because a lot of people aren't kingdom minded. They're self minded. They're all about scheming, trying to see what they can get out of it. Why do you think they always got on TV about a fraud deal? Because they call these little older people with the sweetest voice mm -hmm. and the most compassionate concern. Mm -hmm. And we want you to, to just sow a seed of $1,000. And they're getting their little savings and sowing $1,000 mm -hmm. into a cause that is not a cause. All right. All right. Furnishing somebody's luxury home. Mm -hmm. Not saying that there are legitimate causes. Don't get me wrong. But we got to hear the voice of God. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Another they will not follow. God wants you to use what he has blessed you with. Don't be jealous of what others have. Don't be envious. He says, you occupy. So when he comes, he can say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. See, when he separates the wheat from the tares, baby, I want to be the wheat. I don't care if I ain't got but one pebble to bring God. Lord, this is what I did. This is what I, this is a soul, Lord. This is the, the work. I don't have to work to get into the kingdom. I work because I'm in the kingdom. Amen. 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 He said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. It's somebody in your neighborhood, somebody you encounter, somebody on your job, somebody at the where you fraternize. That's going through something. And they put on their face. 
and I left my mask. They put on their happy face. You know, girl, I, you know, I, is something just happening? No, you need to be sensitive enough to God to pray them through. Right. Say, I'm going to pray with you. We're going to pray right now. And you call on the name of Jesus because at that name, every knee has to bow. It breaks every chain. You can call on his name enough that it will destroy the yoke of bondage that's on them to free them. But we got to be willing to call on his name. We can't just pat them on the back and say it's going to be all right. I'll pray for you. No, I'm going to pray right now Amen. for you. Because when I leave here, I might forget. Because life will be life. I'll get off my focus because the enemy going to bring something to keep me off my focus. So God was giving them an exhortation to use their God-given gifts in the service of God and to take a risk for the sake of the kingdom. Sometimes we play it too safe. We just want to be a secret agent Christian. Everybody know we're Christian. You know, I got my coat on, got my glasses on. Yeah. They ask you, you're a Christian? Yeah. No. Everything else out the closet, you get out the closet. Put that coat up. Unless it's winter. Hmm. And get out there in your life. See what needs to be conquered and divided in your life. Mm -hmm. And don't allow the enemy to cause you to stand still because, oh, I got so many things, Lord. No, God says, get you off your mind. Put somebody else on your mind and I'll work things out in your life. Mm -hmm. You take care of somebody else's stuff and I'll take care of your stuff. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Our personal abilities and our personal wealth is for the kingdom of God. It's to sow and invest into the kingdom. <laughs> Lord, mm. we single women, stop looking for a man. Right. Uh, you don't have to buy one. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get him to go. <laughs> if he wants you, mm -hmm. he wants you. Because right. I read this book, The Flavor of the Month. I remember my daughter got this book out the library. They were, you know, getting rid of some books. I'm like, The Flavor of the Month, I'm going to read that. But it was just saying, it took God's principle. Leah and, Ray and Jacob. Leah paid Rachel for Jacob to sleep with her. Why you buying a man? Why you got to pay his bill? Why he got to drive your car and you at work and then you talking about, oh, I'm waiting on Johnny to pick me up. No, let Johnny get his own car. God gave him a job before he gave him a woman. You better say that again, Pastor. Be who God said you are. If he don't like pistachio, let him get the stepping. You know you pistachio. I know that's why you got a little nice. He like double dust chocolate. Let him find a double dust chocolate. Help, Lord. We just gotta be what God said we are. You know you a plain Jane Vanilla. So why are you looking at him? He like Neapolitan. All the colors in the rainbow. God knew that he like Baskin Robbins got rich like that. Because they knew the people like more than chocolate, vanilla, Thank and strawberry. You. Thank you. And that's how they sold it. 31 flavors. And everybody went to Baskin Robbins. Let him find his own flavor of the month. You stand because God says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And obtains favor from God. So he getting a double blessing. He getting favor from God and you. Thank God for that. Come on now. Jesus. See, in the kingdom, you got to be ready for Christ's coming. And it involves more than just playing it safe and staying in your little zone. It demands the kind of service that produces results in your life as well as somebody else's life. You want the results of God? I'm just saying, spend a little time in God's face. Spend a little bit more time in God's presence. Create an atmosphere. Just like he came in the room for praise and worship, create an atmosphere in your car. Create an atmosphere in your bathroom. Create an atmosphere, and you gotta, you got to press to create an atmosphere yeah. because the enemy is gonna want you to turn on 93 BLX and the All Blues show or whatever. But you gotta press sometimes to get in God's presence. I found myself listening at some old songs, and they was just so good to me. And I'm like, Lord, I thank you. Nearer my God to thee. I said, I ain't trying to clock out of here, God, but I showed this is so blessing me. <laughs> you know, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is yeah, to carry Lord. Yeah, Lord. everything to God in prayer. If I just get on my knees and pray sometimes, yeah. sometimes I just lay on the floor, don't say nothing. Yes. Yes. I'm like, God, hear me. Jesus. Just help me. 
Show me what to do, God. Show me how to walk in front of people. Show me how not to let my hurt cause me to talk out of turn. Help me to be a Christian at all costs. Because it's going to cost us something. This Christian walk is going to cost you something. And so count the cost. Because God is looking for a return on his talents. Don't tell him I knew you was hard and I just brought with you. Just what you gave me, I just gave it back to you. Because he's going to say take it from him and give it to Mr. Ten. And take him on to the other kingdom. Where it's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a gulf between us that they can't come back up here and we can't Jesus. go down there if we wanted to. Jesus. Because that's the way it is. Like Lazarus and the beggar. He said, you the fair assumption. The king said, just let Lazarus come and stick his finger in some water. They say, no, there's a gulf between you and I. Even though we can see you and you can see us. If we wanted to rescue you, because see, some of your loved ones may go to hell and God knew that you would try to rescue them to try to break them up there with him. He said, there's a gulf between us that separates us. I don't want to go to hell, y'all. I don't want us to miss God. As a church, I don't want us to miss God. I don't want us to be outside of his will. I don't want us to be doing the wrong thing. Amen. I want God to keep us and to preserve us. Even though it's hard, it's still God a lot of times. We want everything easy. And life is not easy. No, it's not. We need to be saying something and doing something. Jesus. Our faith demands the kind of service that produces results. Look at Luke 16 and 10 and we'll close. Bless us, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If you be faithful in the little bit, mm -hmm. God will make your little bit abundant. Thank you, Lord. So Thank you, Lord. Do, the, do the right thing. Yes. Pay your tithe. Amen. Tell God I'm honoring you with my first fruits. I, the rest of the bills will be paid. You honor God. Honor God with your own sacrifice. God, I got a need. And I'm bringing it to you. Write God a letter. My mother used to tell us that sometimes. Go write God a letter. And when you write God a letter, tell him all about your problems. Mm. Tell him all about the joy. Because God wants to know that there is more to your life than problems. He says, it's joy in my presence. At my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You got to get to the right hand. Don't let money keep you from God. Don't let people keep you from God. Don't let... Your ability keep you from God because God blessed you with your ability. You appreciate that ability and utilize it for the kingdom. I don't care if it's a washing a window. I, could, I, I think about this lady that used to go to church with us, Sister Kathy, God bless her soul. Sister Kathy could clean up like nobody's business. Amen. And babe, when she got through, you could eat off the floor. Because she could clean. No, and that was right. her thing. And she no, didn't care right. nothing about it. I don't care how junk it was, how dirty it was. But that was her thing. And when she got through with it, it was like it was a transformation because it didn't look like the same place. But her gift made room for her. And people was like, oh, when you clean up for me, I'll pay you. Come on with it. And she, it, it's just God uses everything. Nothing goes to waste with God. Every life has value. So don't get all bent out of shape. Trust God. Get in his face. Because these days are evil. Mm. We got to stand for something or we're going to fall for anything. Amen? Amen. 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 What are you going to do with your talent? Father, we just thank you tonight that we commit our talents to you. Our time, our talents, and our treasure. Because you're worth it all, God. And Father, if, there, if we've committed any act of sin against you by thought, word, deed, or action, we come and we just say we're sorry. 
You said godly sorrow worketh repentance that need not to be repented of. Lord, we are sorry. We won't take your word for granted. We won't take you for granted. But we will do what we're supposed to do. Yes. And we're going to watch you work. Because you're doing a new thing. Suddenly it's going to break forth, God. I thank you for the winds of change blowing in this church. I thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord being our strength and being our focus. I thank you, Lord, for overcomers. I thank you, Father. I thank you that every bill is paid, paid on time, God. Fear is put out. We bind it in the name of Jesus and cast it out. We'll not hold on to what's yours and just hand you that. God, we'll do what we're supposed to do. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. thank you for blessing every household that's here. Yes, and those that didn't come, Father, for you're a good father. Yes, Lord. Lord, we're asking for wisdom tonight. Thank wisdom you, to lead your people. Yes, wisdom to do what you're calling in this hour. Wisdom to stand. Okay. Wisdom to grow the church, the kingdom of God. Yes, Not about a number, but it's about the work of the kingdom. Yes, so help us to be kingdom-minded. In, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. amen. If there is one that...